Hi everyone, so today I'm going to do a panoramic seascape or cityscape uh, based on this watercolour that I did a number of years ago of Salt Hill Promenade in Galway, Ireland. And um, I am going to use this as a basis for a painting on this canvas, which is 30 by 80 cent centimetres. Okay, and my first challenge is to work out my proportions um, from this watercolour study to my canvas. So what I've done first is I have traced um, the basic shapes from the watercolour study onto some tracing paper. And I'm now going to stick this tracing paper down onto a whiteboard. I've drawn a box. It's 15 centimetres by 40 centimetres around a section of my, my trace from the watercolour study. Um, and the 15 centimetres by 40 centimetres is the same proportion as my canvas, remember, which is 30 by 80. So I'm, I'm losing a little bit of my watercolour um, uh, by doing this, but I needed to fit the canvas. I now have a grid drawn on my uh, tracing uh, so I have it divided up into uh, 16 different boxes. So as you can see, I have halfway, quarter way, three quarter way, halfway, quarter way, three quarter way. I also uh, drew my grid in red colouring pencil so that I can differentiate between my grid lines, which are red, and then my drawing lines, which are in pencil. Now I'm ready to make a start on my canvas. I have some ultramarine blue. I have my mix of linseed oil and white spirit. And I am diluting the paint and applying a wash to my canvas. When you're putting your wash on, uh, no harm to maybe have a window open, have the area ventilated where you're working, because you're using a fair amount of white spirit mixed with linseed oil and keep your wash nice and light. I apply wash because it prepares the canvas for the paint that's going to come on. Um, there's linseed oil mixed in with the white spurs, so that's like a glue to help the paint stick to the canvas. And it's also nice to have a ground on first rather than trying to paint onto the stark white surface of the canvas. Now I have a clean dry rag and I'm just using it to wipe off the excess oil on the canvas. Now if my canvas turned upright, I'm going to use some Payne's Grey, smaller brush now, and I'm going to mark at the very top my half quarter and three quarters, so 15, seven and a half, 22 and a half and they, they should look pretty equal because it's a long canvas I'm using a very long ruler to get in my grid lines with Payne's grey the reason I'm using Payne's grey is because I'm going to then do the drawing in French ultramarine blue so there's a different color used for grid lines and a different color used for drawn lines and now I'm using a shorter line, a shorter ruler, I should say, for my grid lines. Canvas is gridded up now. My drawing is gridded up. The boxes look similar proportion. So I'm ready to start painting. I'm starting with the simpler areas first. So for example, the line between the shore and the water, and I'm, I'm keeping an eye on my boxes and I can see the line goes from the, the lowest box here, through here, and on. So I'm getting in some of the really just simple basic shapes um, of the drawing. I'm not drawing in windows or doors or anything like that at this stage. There's quite a lot of detail in this. It's uh, what you get, you know, when you're looking at seascapes where you have towns and cities, 
there's going to be a certain amount of detail in terms of buildings um, and so on. So there's, there's no easy way of doing this. So I'm, I'm getting into the basic shapes of the buildings. Um, this is the area I'm looking at. It's quite a detailed area. So I'm really just trying to reduce things down to their basic shapes to, you know, rectangles, triangles, um, and so on. I am not getting involved in any kind of tiny details. And another thing, you know, at this stage is if you make a mistake, so for example, my roof is a little bit too low here, don't leave the mistake, get rid of it. Get rid of your mistake first before you start drawing over it. Um, it really pays to spend a bit of time drawing and drawing things accurately because if you don't, it, it affects the rest of the painting. So I'm going to make sure I get my drawing right first, um, no matter what. So I'm working my way along slowly, taking my time. I'm on to this little section now, which is very busy. And I'm trying to simplify things for myself. So I think what I might do first is I might try and put in this building here first. Um, which in the painting is this brown house with red roof okay and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where it is in relation to this box so it is if here's halfway it's to the right of the halfway and it doesn't go over quite as far as three-quarter way so I'm going to just take those measurements and see if I can place it so I've constructed a little box. This is the highest point of the house, lowest point where it's seen. Doesn't come any further than this side, doesn't come any further than that side. And I'm gonna try and just fish this little house into that now, okay? So here we go. So our roof is slanted down slightly, kind of coming out the back like so. And the line here, is it appears parallel but it, it's it's not quite parallel those two lines will eventually uh, meet up on the vanishing point on the horizon far far away but we, we won't worry about that too much for the moment just just watch the lines are not quite parallel they look like they're converging as they go away from from us uh, and then the front part of the house like a triangle we have a vertical line here and there's a little hint of another roof in the back so that's enough information uh, for me because you know i don't want to get bogged down in windows and doors as i said at this stage so i'm as i have that house in then i can use that house as a guide to put in my other little details that i see and here i am on to i think which is the church steeple uh, in salt hill so i am just keeping it very simple it's literally like a box with a triangle on top and I'll leave it at that for the moment. So I think I need to talk about perspective at this stage. Um, when you're looking at these buildings in the distance, you need to reduce them down to shapes. So if you, if you take a building that maybe looks like a box, it has a flat roof. So the way it's drawn, is uh, you can imagine here's our promenade and we see this building we see one co the one corner of it here we see another corner here and we see another corner there and this corner here is the corner that's closest to us so it appears the biggest and then the other corners are farther away so they appear shorter okay and because they appear shorter then the lines of the roof drop down to meet those shorter shorter points. If this building had a, a roof on it, if it wasn't a flat roof, if it had a gabled roof, um, you'd be looking at something like this. Again, th this line would be slanting down and it would be following the same direction as this line here. So they're eventually gonna meet on the horizon line, which is probably somewhere around there. So this would be our, our kind of our roof. So the roof is slanting and even the windows 
if there were windows in this house, the windows will appear to be sort of dropping away on either side. So there's nothing straight, you know, it's, it's, it's all angles. So I have a couple of cars as well on parked on the promenade that um, I'm going to try and fit in here. Again, just basic shapes. So again, looking at my drawing, I can see a shape, uh, quite a long shape. It runs the length the, of the, this house or the width of it. Goes a little bit further and then the front sort of slants down. So that's the basic shape of, of one car beside it. Again, another car is more round and curved. Um, and if I go back to the first car, within that car, there's sort of three windows, one, two, three, okay? Just to remind myself what it is. And a lot of the car then is covered by rocks and so on on, on, the, um, on the shore. And there's even a hint of a, a van, another shape over there. I also have mapped out um, these houses here. Okay, so it's a lovely cluster of houses. Um, I think that's Daly's Fort Road, it's called. So I have them literally as just boxes. No windows and doors, no detail. And um, I think what I'm gonna do next is put in uh, some lines for the clouds and then maybe start with a little bit of color. I'm putting in a nice line for the clouds. This is the fun bit. I don't have to measure clouds too much, just kind of keep an eye on them uh, from the drawing, but I get to make lots of nice squiggly lines and I don't have to measure anything. I've got my basic drawing down now, so I am going to rub out, or at least rub down the grid lines. Uh, so I'm using just, a, again, a dry rag to rub these down. They won't disappear completely, but I just don't want them to be strong. I don't want them coming through the paint. Now I'm gonna start blocking in some uh, sky area. So I've got some cobalt blue and white on the brush. Um, and I'm just gonna enjoy sort of moving the paint around in the sky after all that drawing. And just be nice and, and free and loose with my strokes. Um, I'm not aiming for like a perfectly sort of a polished, uh, you know, tidy brush strokes. I'm just going to be nice and loose with the strokes. So as I'm painting, I'm just dipping into a bit of blue, and to be honest, I'm just dipping into a bit of white and, and sort of mixing my my paint on the canvas. Um, I'm not going to stress myself about this sky. I think. There's enough stress in this painting as regards getting buildings right and so on. So uh, I'm going to be as a kind of nice and loose um, and uh, expressive with my stroke where I can be. Now I'm using uh, some titanium white. Not much oil. I'm not really using any oil at the moment because the oil is on the canvas. The canvas is still wet from the wash. And I'm just putting on some titanium white. I'm using a different brush now because the last brush had a lot of blue in it. And I'm just blocking in my clouds nice and uh, quickly. And um, I'm kind of half thinking I might even dip into a little bit of, here's a little bit of tiny bit of Payne's Grey. And you can just to kind of run that in into the clouds here and there. You know, if you put too much of it on, it's all wet paint, so I can just sort of brush it in. And you know, if, if, if something isn't working right, if the, or you put too much of a color on, or a color takes over, or what have you, um, you can always just let the painting dry, let it dry, and then come back to it. So now what I'm starting to do is uh, just use color to block in some of the buildings so that they stand out from each other a little bit more. So you can see in my original, some of the buildings are yellow. So I'm just gonna concentrate on obvious colours for the moment, the red roof, dark buildings and so on, and get them blocked in. So now I'm using burnt sienna with a little bit of white to block in some of the roofs and uh, other areas that I, I, I see maybe where I, I need touches of this colour here and also on this building here. Uh, 
so just working my way down the painting, blocking in um, different areas. And um, I'm using, I'm trying to keep my color palette fairly limited. So for example, here I'm using burnt sienna and a little bit of white. Um, I'm adding white to the burnt sienna because as details go into the distance, um, they become more faint and it's, it's kind of harder to see them. Whereas as details come closer to you, so for example, the rocks here will be a stronger color. So I might use less or, or very little um, burnt sienna in the rocks here, for example, um, to make them come forward and these ones go back. Uh, stroke wise, I'm, I'm, I'm going sort of as a slight slant here um, because this area is an area where you have a lot of rocks and they're sloping down to the sea. So my stroke wouldn't be kind of going across like that. I'm following the, the fall of the rocks or the, the stones as they come down. And what I can also do is I'm using burnt sienna there, but I'm also using a little bit of uh, Payne's grey at the, at the base to eventually create a little bit of shadow as the rocks come down to meet uh, the water. So I'm using a bit of sap green here uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of cover to um, this area parkland in front of these houses and uh, you can see you know I'm kind of losing some of the lines from my houses um, this always happens when you start blocking in colour that sometimes the drawing can disappear a little bit but we, we'll, we'll bring it back again. So now I'm just blocking in the water and I'm using some cobalt and white again. Uh, stroke is across to describe the, the flatness of the water and I'm just going to work my way towards the bottom of the painting with this. Um, I'm always inclined to go from top to bottom when I'm painting because again your sleeve if you're if you're working the other way if you're working at the bottom first and, and then uh, you know putting on wet paint above it your sleeve can pick up wet paint and, and drag it upwards and, and kind of interfere with what you're doing. So that's it blocked in basic colours blocked in so I'm going to work some detail into it, but I'm still going to try and keep it nice and loose and free, um, like the sketch. It's one of the things I like about the sketch is, is it's, it's busy, but there's a looseness to it. Um, okay. Now I'm starting to put in small details. Uh, I'm using Payne's Green, a small brush. So I'm putting in windows. Um, at this stage, I am you know it's fairly rough and ready I can always tidy things up when they dry but I just want to get the uh, proportions right so you know for example there's one two three windows corresponding with the three windows across here so I want to get an impression of these three windows uh, without getting into the the detail of what each window is about um, so I just work my way along like so I'm working into the wet paint as well which has advantages and disadvantages um, advantages is it, it kind of sinks in so if you do make a mistake um, it's you know it's, it's very easy kind of remove it disadvantages that you're picking up paint as well as putting it down so uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm using actually a very small brush and I'm using Payne's grey and at times I'm using um, I'm using burnt umber as well and I'm kind of using them like the way I use the ink pen in my, my drawing. So I'm, I'm drawing into the wet paint, I'm, I'm drawing, you know, the sort of the, 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 sh the shapes and the, and the kind of the textures of the rocks that I see. Um, I'm also coming out here into the distance where there are rocks as well and I can see it's almost like a little fence of some sort or I don't know what it is, but I'm just putting in those lines into the wet paint and they seem to go the whole way out. They stop there. And um, then we've got another area of kind of, of, of rock uh, just jutting into the water until it disappears. So I'm using my small brush 
uh, like the way again I use the the pen in, in the watercolor so I am bringing a little bit more movement and kind of mark making into the painting so for example in the water I'm looking at my watercolor as I paint and I'm trying to sort of copy some of the strokes that I see in the watercolor so I'm putting wet paint uh, down on top of wet paint and um, if there's a stroke that for example I feel is a little strong you know I can always wipe it down or drag it out um, knock it down a little bit at this stage as well but you know I'm just trying to keep um, the painting as, as, as close to what I'm working from okay so uh, trying to make it that little bit more personal to me it's, it's more my style this isn't everyone's style but this is how I paint sometimes uh, I like to turn my painting upside down on the easel and even work upside down um, often when you turn a painting upside down and when you look at it things that aren't working or maybe something that doesn't isn't right will stand out very clearly so it's a good idea from time to time turn your painting upside down even try to paint upside down with your image upside down obviously